All right, we're going to talk some simplifying radicals. And to review a little bit, we'll take and simplify the square root of 20. To do that, we always looked for the perfect square within 20. And so perfect squares, what do we mean by that? Um, 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 16. 5 squared is 25. 36, and so on. And so the perfect square factor in 20, you can write that as 4 times 5. Square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And so we're taking that property of exponents back, property of radicals backwards, and we get this 2 root 5. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to compare that, but we're going to be doing it with cubed roots. So the cubed root of 54. And so with the cubed roots, you're going to have to look for the perfect cubes. And so we've been dealing a little bit with those, but the perfect cubes would be 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And actually, that's the one we see in here. And so 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And so you're going to want to become more familiar with those as well. Um, so 27 times 2, and so the cubed root of 27 times the cubed root of 2. Cubed root of 27 is 3, and so we leave the 2 inside, and that's our final answer. So we also rationalized, which was getting the radical out of the denominator. And so if we had something like the square root of 2 over 3, we could reduce that to the square root of 2 over the square root of 3. The problem with this is that there was a radical in the bottom, and even though it's a bit old-fashioned, we still rationalize it by making the bottom a perfect square. We multiply it by something over something. And if we can turn that 3 into a 9, we'll be able to take the square root of it. And so we multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, and you can multiply the insides of those like we just learned. And then you get the square root of 9 on the bottom, which makes it reduce to the, of the square root of 6 over 3. So we're going to apply that same principle, but with cubed roots. So let's pretend that instead we were taking the cubed root of 2 over the cubed root of 3. Now we want to make 3 into a perfect cube, so we have to multiply this again by something over something. And so the perfect cube with 3 is 3 times 3 times 3. And so we're going to have to multiply this by 9 so that we can get this to be the cube root of 27 on the bottom. The whole reason to get the cube root of 27 on the bottom is because it's a perfect cube. So we multiply it by 9 on top, so we get the cube root of 18 divided by the cube root of 27, cube root of 18, over the cube root of 27, which is 3. Alright, we can also add and subtract some roots. Adding and subtracting roots is all about just having like terms. And so it's going to be just treating it just like x's. So if we had 5 root 3 minus 2 root 3, think of it as 5x minus 2x. Well, that's just 3 root 3. And the whole reason we get there is because you can factor out a root 3. There's a root 3 in both of these. And you can factor that out, and that leaves 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is 3, and that was the whole reason that we can simplify that to 3 root 3. Same thing happens if we had left it as 5 times 3 to the 1 half power minus 2 times 3 to the 1 half power. It would have worked the same way, it's just a different notation, but it would still be 3 times 3 to the 1 half power. But the goal is, is that these need to be alike. If they aren't alike, um, you can't subtract. And so if we have the cubed root 
of 16 minus the cubed root of 54, we're going to have to change these up a little bit. And so we might have to reduce a little bit before we can actually subtract. And so the cubed root within 16 is 8 times 2. And the cubed root within 54, uh, we did, dealt with that earlier, and that was 27 times 2. Again, the cubed root being 3 times 3 times 3. And so if we simplify these, the cubed root of 8 is 2, cubed root of 2, minus, take the cubed root of 27, that's 3, cubed root of 2, and so we're left with 2 minus 3, just like we did before. Take out the cubed root of 2, because it's a common factor, and we are left with 2 minus 3. And so that's a negative 1, or a negative cubed root of 2. You can put the 1 there, you cannot put the 1 there. It's a little more simplified without the 1. But again, you don't have to write this factored part. Just say, well, 2 minus 3, that's negative 1 cubed root of 2. I'm just showing you why it works. Um, and then let's try some with a variable in it. Um, let's say we have 10 times the fourth root of 5s to the seventh minus s fourth root of 80s cubed all right so we have to simplify these and this is the first time we've seen some with variables in it um, but let's see how we can do the tens already out here we're looking for the fourth root so we can't take anything out of the five but this s to the seventh can be simplified because if we separate that into 5 and s to the 4th and s cubed, s to the 4th and s cubed still make s to the 7th. This right here, s to the 4th, is a perfect 4th. What times itself 4 times is s to the 4th is just s. So we can make this 10s times the 4th root of 5 s cubed. And we subtract. We've got s out front here. We've got the fourth root, and we have to look for the fourth root within 80. Now, fourth roots. What are our fourth roots? We've got um, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. And so just divide 80 by 16. See how many times it goes into it. 16 times 5 is 80. And then s cubed is not a perfect fourth. And so we'll just leave that in there. And so simplify this 16. We said that that was the 2. We already had an S out front, so I'm going to write it after the 2. The fourth root, we have 5, and then S cubed. Now, it's very important that we have the exact same thing here. This is very similar to this, and actually including the S. And so we have 10 of these minus 2 of these, and so that leaves 8 of them. 8S to the fourth root of 5s cubed. And that's how we deal with some roots.